Welcome to my magical history tour. A place with links to the Beatles, over 900 Grade II listed buildings, and a place that prior to 1888 didn't even exist. So, let's go and see what William Lever built. Today, I'm exploring the beautiful Port Sunlight Village here on the Will. A village that prior to 1888 didn't even exist. Everything around here was marshland, rivers and streams that flowed down to the Mersey. Until a guy called William Lever came along. Now William Lever was a soap baron. And he had factories out in Warrington where he needed to expand. And he picked here. And then he built a model village. Not just tiny houses, but more of a purpose-built village for all his workers from the soap factory that bared his name, Lever Brothers. Our port sunlight is gorgeous, it really is. But it's been named after soap. Lever Brothers' top-selling brand was something called Sunlight. Port Sunlight. Now, Lever wasn't the first person to ever build his workers somewhere to live. Henry Ford did the same thing in America, but um, his was more about controlling his employees rather than enhancing their life. Don't get me wrong, I think Lever had a certain aspect of wanting to control some of their lives. But everything they did and the money that he spent was to enhance their lives outside of the factory. And he's created something remarkable. I mean, all of the houses, all the blocks of houses that are built here, there's over 900 grade two listed buildings here, but the houses were all designed differently. So as you walk around the village, you've got blocks and blocks of houses that don't look the same. It's such a unique place. And it's just been built on marshland and rivers. And you'll see in a bit, when we go down to the Dell, you'll see where the river is sort of worn away all the land and where the, the river used to flow. Not anymore. Clever guy, that Lever. Something else Lever did when he built these houses is he gave them all sort of allotment gardens so that the workers could grow their own food as well. And even though Lever had a massive mansion a couple of miles away in Thornton Huff. He had a cottage built here for himself. So he could have scarped off all the time to his massive house, but he lived here to demonstrate to his employees that he was part of the community as well. Now, you will see his cottage is a little different to some of the other houses built, but still, not particularly grand. And I guess the measure of the man that he decided to live amongst his employees. <laughs> I'm not sure there's an awful lot of CEOs that would do that today, eh? Enough of me waffling. Let's go and have a look at what Port Sunlight has to offer. was extremely eager to have his own memorial here so they could remember all of the employees that lost their lives in World War One. It's one of the most impressive war memorials I've ever seen and uh, it's actually classed as a significant monument and it's even listed as Grade One. The monument itself is called Defence of the Realm and Lever designed it to have women, children and military personnel on it because when World War One started he feared that there was an invasion coming and the invasion would have actually impacted everybody so unusually for a war memorial 
it does actually depict women and children on it as well. This sundial has got a set of summer stones and it's got a set of winter stones. And apparently, if you stand on the right month and the sun is shining, your shadow indicates the time. It is nine o'clock. And here we have the Lever Memorial. Now this was built to commemorate the life of William Lever. The figure at the top depicts inspiration. The three in the front, right to left, depict education, charity and industry. And the figure at the back, facing the Lady Lever Art Gallery, depicts art, funnily enough. It's believed that this was actually paid for by private donations from over 22,000 of Lever employees. <laughs> I don't know if it's voluntary, but... In front of us is Christchurch, again built by Lever. Well, paid for by Lever, not sure he was actually a builder on the side. But it was built as a non-denominational church. Now again, that's deliberate because he wanted everyone to turn up and worship together and foster, further foster that sense of community that he wanted. But you'll also find in the grounds the tombs of Lord and Lady Lever around the side of the church. Hume Hall was originally built as the women's dining hall for the factory workers. It was turned into a, an art gallery in 1911. Now, not many know, but the Beatles gave four performances here. And it was the venue for Ringo Starr's first gig as the Beatles drummer. Lyceum, or the Lyceum, is a Grade 2 listed building that was originally built as the school and also as a place of worship before Christ Church was built. You can look at it now, it still gives off Victorian school vibes. Not good. As previously mentioned, Port Sunlight used to be all marsh, with rivers and streams running down to the Mersey. 
the Dell was actually created by these. And the Dell Bridge, which again is a grade two listed bridge, was built as a walkway over that huge dip below. later on converted to a theatre, which it still is today. You can still go on some shows and stuff, and it's run by a bunch of volunteers. So if you're in the neck of the woods, you want to check it out? In fact, marching with my messages, if you're in the neighbourhood anyway, just check what's on my sound. Absolutely stunning. I've always considered it historic, but I didn't know whether I considered it historic, just because I lived on the Wirral and I knew it. So, yeah, up in the neck of the woods, Merseyside, Whittle. Come and check out Port Sunlight. It's absolutely amazing. 